So this video will explain how to graph data from a brief experimental analysis of BEA or any other single subject research that involves multiple phases across time. We're going to cover how to input data into the data templates that I provided and how to pull up the actual chart after the data is entered and then how to edit those charts. And let's talk about how to do that. So this is what the template looks like. And let's describe, let's talk about how to do each of these. I'm going to show you how to use two templates um, to help you graph your data and visually display the results of your brief experimental analysis, which is in keeping with the way we present results from any kind of single subject research design. There are two templates that you can use. The first template here um, is if you are use if your design involves assessing baseline performance only at the beginning of your BEA and right before the reversal phase. The second template down here is if you plan to assess baseline throughout the intervention, so not only at the beginning of the BEA, but prior to int each intervention that you decide to test. And I'll show you how to use both of these. So let's start with template one, where you're going to assess baseline at the beginning and just before the reversal phase. So you see this, that both templates are set up so that there is a column for the session numbers, a column for recording performance at baseline, and columns for each of the three interventions you decide to test. If you are testing more than three interventions, you would simply add in um, another column, intervention four. And if you wanted to actually give these different names, such as uh, motivation, cover, copy, compare, that would be fine too. But for the sake of this, we are just going to keep it as intervention one, two, and three. So now let's pretend um, we have we finished our BA, we have our data, and now we're going to chart it. So the first thing we're going to do is enter our data according to the number of sessions. And for the sake of simplicity, even though within a single session we might administer more than one baseline probe, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to enter each baseline probe as if it was a different session. So let's pretend we're doing an intervention on reading fluency and we're recording the scores for the number of words read correctly per minute. Let's pretend it's a first grader and the student is struggling. Um, and at baseline performance, the first baseline, they did 13 words read correctly. The next baseline, they did 15 words read correctly. And the third baseline, they did 17 words read correctly. Now we move into our intervention phase. And let's pretend the first intervention was a motivation intervention in which we give them a contingent reward if they're able to increase their performance above baseline. And maybe in this case, they read 20 words read correctly per minute. The next intervention we decided to try was to test whether the student um, needed uh, additional modeling. So we did listening passage preview for the next one. And we, at this one, the student did uh, 27 words read correctly. And in our third intervention, Let's pretend the student, uh, we, we were testing the hypothesis of repeated practice, and in this case, the student did 26 words read correctly. Now, at this point, because we haven't assessed baseline throughout, um, we've only assessed it at the beginning prior to our interventions, in order to establish that the relationship between the intervention and the behavior, which in this case is words read correctly, is a function of the actual interventions, we need to reassess baseline to ensure that the findings we had are not due to maturity, uh, just maturation or a practice effect. So in session seven, we would re-administer a baseline performance, and let's pretend that the student scored 16 words read correctly. And by documenting that the baseline did not change, we're able now to show that there is a functional relationship between the interventions we did and the actual student performance. 
However, it's not enough to document it once. In order to really document the functional relationship, we're going to do the reversal. And now we will actually administer the two interventions that were most promising in reverse order, which in this case was intervention two, listening passage preview, and intervention three, repeated practice. Right now we know that they're both better than motivation, but we don't know which of them seems to be most promising. So in session eight, we would administer intervention three again, because um, we would want to do the reverse order. So in intervention three, let's pretend the student scored uh, 24, excuse me, 22 words read correctly. And then in session nine, we would go back to testing intervention two, listening passage preview, and let's pretend in this case that the student scored uh, 27 again. So now we've been able to document a functional relationship between the interventions we decided to use and the outcome, words read correctly, that's not due to maturity because we've showed that the student um, is still at baseline when doing this independently. And we've been able to replicate the intervention effect twice, which means that while it's not a perfect uh, causal relationship, we have strong probabilities to suggest that the student would benefit from listening passage preview in an extended implementation. So um, this is how we would enter data for uh, template one when we are just assessing baseline at the beginning and then right before the reversal phase. I'll show you how to chart this data in a minute, but let's move on to how you would actually input data for template two as if you were assessing the baseline throughout the intervention. So let's pretend it's the same student, and at baseline, they scored, again, 13 words read correctly, 15 words read correctly, and 17 words read correctly. Um, but in this kind of design, we're going to try to document that the functional relationship is not due to maturity, and we're going to do that by assessing baseline prior to intervention every time. So let's pretend that on session four, we do another baseline data. We say, hi, hi buddy, how you doing? Good to see you. Let's do another uh, oral reading fluency probe and the student scores 17 words read correctly. Then we do the intervention with the motivation and we find that the student scores 20 words read correctly. On session five, again, we start off by saying hello and immediately having the student do an independent baseline probe. And in this time, the student did 16 words read correctly. We then introduce the intervention of listening passage preview in which the student scored 27 words read correctly. Then again, on session six, we re-administer baseline where the student scores um, let's say they store 15 words read correctly. Then we do intervention three, which was uh, repeated practice, repeated reading, and the student scores a uh, 26. Now, um, we, since we've been doing baseline all along, we actually, if you notice, there were nine sessions for the first template and only eight sessions here because we can immediately pick the two most promising interventions and administer them in reverse order. However, again, we're going to be assessing baseline. So in this case, we start on session seven. We give another baseline probe. The students at 17 words read correctly. And then with intervention two scores a, um, excuse me, we would start with intervention three because we do it in reverse order. So the student scores a 22. And then on session eight, we do baseline performance again. The student scores a 15. And then with listening passage preview, scores 27 words read correctly again. So you can see the difference here is that in template one, we're only assessing baseline prior to the interventions and then right before the reversal phase. Whereas in template two, we're assessing baseline performance all along and um, allows us that even during the and during the reversal phase. Now to create charts for these, it's very simple. You're simply going to highlight 
the chart area, including, this is very important, including the chart headers here. On PCs, um, the charts are listed under insert and it there's a charts tab on Macs. I think you have a separate charts um, tab or a charts folder uh, or ch charts drop down so you'll just have to convert uh, and find the charts for you the chart we're going to use is a scatter plot and I'm just going to click it I'm going to select the first one and now we have uh, baseline is one color each of our interventions is each of our three interventions is given a different color and we're going to modify that momentarily and so you can see here we have baseline intervention one intervention two intervention three then we have baseline again and then we reverse it intervention three notice how it's the same color and then intervention two notice how that's the same color and here's our little legend which we're actually going to modify for template two we're going to do the same thing highlight the column headers and all the data go to insert or charts select scatter plot I select the most basic scatter plot click on that I'm just going to move it down slightly and now the difference with this one of course is that we're assessing baseline every time and we again start with intervention one two three reverse it three then two and again we find the same effect that intervention two is the most promising. I'm going to stop the recording here and we'll move on to another recording on how to edit our charts. All right, so let's talk about how to edit your charts to make them look more professional. First thing we're going to do is adjust the names of the interventions to the actual names that what you use. So let's say motivation and it will automatically update Let's say cover, copy, compare, and listening passage preview, for example. I'm just using the acronyms. You could spell them out if you want. But you see here that they update. The next thing that we're going to do is format the data series. So if you click on this one, you can see it's baseline. It'll highlight all the baseline. And if you then right click and hit um, format data series, you're gonna see some options. Let's slide over so we can see here. You're gonna to go to this fill option. You're gonna hit marker and click the drop down for marker options. You're gonna move from automatic to and click built in. And let's change the shape of these. Right now there we only have dots and they're separated by colors, which is nice, but let's also change the shape. So let's usually baseline is indicated by an X. So let's select the X. And let's increase the size to maybe 11. So now we have our baseline indicated. Let's do the same thing for intervention one or our motivation one, which is only one. So again, format data series. Let's go to fill, marker, drop down for marker options. Let's go to a built-in. Let's select, um, I don't know, let's how about a, a square. And let's increase that font size again. Okay. Let's how about this one, intervention two. And actually you don't even need to right click again. You could just, not, now we could start to edit exactly what was highlighted. So you see it went dropped back to automatic. So let's go to built in. Let's make this a triangle. Go ahead and click triangle, adjust your size. And now we have triangles and let's do intervention three listing passage preview. Again, it let's just, all we have to do is built in. How about we do a diamond? And then again, let's bring it up to 11 point font. If you desire to change the colors, so let's say this color isn't exactly what we want to do. Keep going down to where it says border and change the color to whatever you'd like it to be. So I don't know, let's pick this. And that should, and since it's a filled in thing, we have to go to fill and select the same color. I think it was this. Okay, so now we've changed it. Uh, let's change this one. Go down to marker. Let's change the border color to, I don't know, that. 
And let's change the actual color to the same thing. And now we have this. How about we change this color to black? There's no fill needed because an X has no nothing inside it. So we don't need to do a fill. So let's just do a border and let's select black. All right. And that looks pretty good. So let's add a couple things. You're going to see this plus here. Let's go ahead and X this out. See this plus? Click on that. It allows you to add chart elements. Let's go ahead and add access titles. We were doing uh, intervention and the outcome, the primary dependent variable was words read correctly. So go ahead and type that in. The access title down here is session. And let's, the chart title is already there. So let's give it a, let's give it a title. So BEA for oral reading fluency. Um, or we could give the student's name, maybe JR's BEA for oral reading fluency. If you click on the graph, you'll see this chart title again, or chart elements. Uh, let's see. You could move your legend if you wanted. Uh, scratch that. Can't move it. <laughs> um, now let's add, what we're going to do is add vertical lines to separate the phases. Go to insert and you're going to go to shapes and grab your line. Separate the baseline from intervention phase. Try to get that as vertical as possible. Okay. Once it's there, if you right click it, change the outline to a different color, usually black. And let's right click that and click up here, shape outline, go down to weight and change the weight to something a little bit higher, two and a quarter. Once you have that ready to go, you could just control C, control V, control C, control V. And now we'll separate our intervention phase from our baseline phase. And now we can separate, you can decide if you want another one. If you do, you can separate the withdrawal from the reversal. And now you've basically created a nice graph. The only last thing you might want to do is maybe change the font. If you highlight one of the text, you could just change the font or the font size. You could do that also for the numbers. So if you just select the access numbers, you can change those. I'm going to change everything to times. And let's change session to times and increase that font size a little bit. And let's select this and also change that to times and we can increase the font size. And there you go. That's how you make a nice looking BEA graph.